Being a senior in high school, everyone seems to be at a crossroad in their life. Thinking about college, making career choices, and choosing your major accordingly. I feel all these pressures too, but I think of it as an opportunity to find meaning in all that I do. Because only then do I genuinely feel like doing something. Making such decisions are not only making me think about the meaning of it all, but it's also one of the biggest challenges that I have to face. For me, the biggest challenge in life is finding meaning in life itself. Now, this may seem like a highly philosophical or epistemological question, but I see it as one that is definitely worth asking. After all, if you can find inner meaning, you can then start to feel at peace with yourself. Um, at this point of time, I'm considering that how do I even go about such a task? So I'd like to call somebody up on stage to help me aid myself with this uh, process. So raise of hands if anybody would like to come up. Yes. So to begin, um, the one thing that I asked myself is that essentially, can you definitely state the ultimate purpose of human life? <laughs> How about an easier question? Um, what do you think your purpose is? Okay, thank you. So as just seen and from the questions I've asked my peers, my teachers, my parents and everyone around me included, I seem to have broadly categorized um, life into three, meaning of life into three overarching segments. First being monetary gain, because this is one of the most common answers that I get, that I want to get rich. And only then can I start finding happiness. Secondly, being subjective fulfillment. Getting that dream girl, buying that house, getting the best grades, whatever it is might be to you. And lastly, being emotional stability. Like the individual just stated, ultimately we all want to be happy. So now many of these questions might seem highly subjective, and I agree with that. But some of these answers don't quite gel with me. First, let's talk about money. Let's say that all of you, each one of you included, get to a point where you have all the money in the world that you can imagine. You can buy that Ferrari, that yacht, or whatever it is that you wish for. But then what? As seen in one of my favorite TV shows, Bojack Horseman, where the titular character has all the money he can think of, he is still miserable in his life. Not just TV shows, even mirrored in real life, where many celebrities have all the money they can think of, yet they resort to drugs because they just cannot seem to mind, uh, wrap their mind around things. Because the question arises, what is the end to it all? What am I getting to? In my juvenile life, I've experienced both sides of the spectrum, financial hardship and financial stability. I can agree with the common belief that financial stability is a factor for an easygoing life. Yet, I've personally seen what money can do, especially to one of the strongest institutions in our world, being family. My family had to go through a financial crisis which not only affected them emotionally, but caused the deterioration of our extended family relations. A money-oriented mentality is one that is broadly focused on materialistic gain rather than true meaning. Personally, I don't think money is the answer. Yet, like I said, you need it for an easygoing life. But I see it as not the end goal. Next, let's consider subjective fulfillment. Let's um, talk about getting into the best colleges, as I feel like many of you here can relate to that. Let's say that I apply to my college, hoping that my two years of hard work have paid off. The day arises, and I get my letter. Let's say for whatever reason, bad grades, or whatever it might be, I don't get accepted. Now, my subjective fulfillment, my goal, is not met. It's not satisfied, and therefore, I'm sad, I suffer. Now let's look at the other side, that even if I get accepted, I set another subjective goal for myself and strive towards that. Get to that college, do the best there, get the best job. But then what next? 
I keep setting goals for myself again and again and again, and it just feels like an endless struggle leading to what? So if, even if not taken in a broader sense, I can only find that subjective fulfillment serves as a temporary distraction. At the start of this school year, I had lofty ambitions. Getting the best grades, do the best that I can, hoping to get into the best colleges. Some of these goals were met, where I got into a position at the school where I could genuinely start helping people by becoming part of the student council. On a more personal front though, many of my goals, like doing the best I can in a certain class, were not quite met. Even just sitting in class, sometimes I think that are these goals really what it's supposed to come down to? It serves as a temporary distraction for me until the next time I start thinking. I try to focus on whatever it is in front of me until this question comes back to bite me. And I don't, quite to, I don't get to a definite end. It all seems futile if you start looking at the bigger picture. So, Go to college, get a good job, raise a family, support them, and then ultimately be happy. This is, what we, this is what we all strive to go towards. But the reality of it is that life is a long, absurd journey that almost never goes the way you want it to. But, like many say, if you're happy, then none of this matters, right? The ultimate goal for many is happiness. Yet, by a show of hands, let's see how many of you can definitely say that you're absolutely content with where you are in your life. There are some hands and I'm really happy about that, but for the others in the room, that feeling for me itself is rarely felt. So, I would love being content. And right now, I'd like to share a quote by Woody Allen, one of my favorite directors, who compares life to a subpar meal shared between a couple of old women. So one says, boy, the food at this place is terrible. And the other replies, I know, right? And such small portions too. Essentially, Allen claims that just like this meal, life can be short and terrible and miserable. And it's all over much too quickly. So, I wonder, through all of this, whether there is a quintessential meaning to it all. Is there no purpose or meaning that is built into life? And what is the point in anything? So, this is the biggest confession that I have to make today. That I am an existential nihilist. Someone who finds no meaning in existence, or believes that there is no inherent or built-in meaning to the purpose of life. I feel like there is no existential purpose. If there is no meaning to anything that we do, you might ask me, then why do anything? You might not agree with me, and that's completely fine, but I think that there is something that we can all learn from this. So let's consider the indifference that the cosmos displays towards humanity. How in just a month, or maybe even a few minutes, many of you might not even remember the contents of this talk. Hopefully though, it leaves an impact on you though or how every hundred years or so, what you did or did not do is not going to serve any ulterior purpose. All of this leaves me with lingering meaninglessness. So why go on? French philosopher Camus calls this feeling of meaninglessness the absurd, which refers to the absurdity of human life itself. Now, this can be thought of as a constant conflict between what we want, meaning in the universe, happiness, or whatever it is that you want, versus what we actually find. Seemingly formless chaos, meaninglessness, and suffering. Now, many of you, even right now, must be thinking, what is this guy even talking about? And that such chain of thought is of no use. You will only end up to a radical decision like, per se, committing suicide. That is, if there is no point to anything, why not just end it? I often think this way too, which leaves me with the feeling of depression and dejection. So then, why do I even choose to go on? Yet, before I answer this question, I think I'd like to circle back to Camo because he seems to feel the same way that I do. We might never find the meaning that we want to find. 
Either we might discover a certain meaning that makes sense to us through a leap of faith by placing our hopes in a God beyond this world, or we might conclude that life is meaningless like myself. We might even try to constantly distract ourselves from this irritating question which seems to lead us to nowhere, and we might even succeed for some time until it comes back to us, leaving you at the start of this seemingly endless loop. Camus illustrates this struggle with the absurd through the microcosm of the myth of Sisyphus. So according to Greek myth, Sisyphus was punished for all eternity to roll a rock up a mountain, reach all the way to the top, then only have the boulder roll all the way to the bottom. Now, Camus claims that Sisyphus is the ideal absurd hero and that his punishment is representative of the human condition. Sisyphus must struggle perpetually without hope of success, which many of us might feel sometimes. So long as he accepts that there's nothing more to life than this absurd struggle, only then can he start to find happiness in it. So there is this constant struggle that we all go through, whatever it may be, your personal struggle, um, that many of us go through, and we will try finding an ulterior meaning in all that we do. Uh, so to say, an existential crisis. At one point, maybe not now, later you might think, what am I ultimately doing any of what I'm doing for? Yet, I think that we need to stop that because there isn't really any. You need to break the illusion of purpose because only then can you continue to find your own. This rebellion against absurdity of human life can serve as a constant reminder of the very beauty of it. So to answer the question that I raised earlier, why go on? I can say that even suicide itself is pointless. You will be succumbing to the pressures of the absurdity. Yet I say that facing this absurdity does not entail suicide, but on the contrary, allows us to live life to its fullest. Dwell in that meaninglessness so that you can start to find your own meaning. Explore anything that excites you and worry not about whether or not you are fulfilling some set purpose, getting to that end goal or not. We all have a certain a priori knowledge within us, knowledge that is built, built into us all, like our instincts. Now, using this innate ability that we all possess, one becomes a catalyst for exploring their own meaning. Remember that you're not your car, you're not your bank balance or your grades because ultimately none of it is going to serve an existential purpose for life, so then why worry about it? Which is why once you become, become aware of the absurd, you can break free from whatever it is that's plaguing you at the moment. Free yourself, revolt, and be passionate about whatever it is that you wish to do. Now this opens door for self-discovery. After all, something that makes innate and logical sense to you can be an essential tool towards finding your own meaning. And I believe that through embracing the absurd, you can begin your journey. Many a time we feel dejected at not being able to find a certain meaning or reaching that end goal. Yet, through embracing the absurd, one realizes that there is no real end goal. Instead, like Camus says, one must imagine Sisyphus happy. The process of going through life itself is the very beauty of it. Along the way, we can continue to discover the best and the worst that life has in store for us. And at this point, the point of it all comes down to is to enjoy this uncertain and absurd journey. Let's consider Samuel Beckett's play, Waiting for Godot. The story follows two men waiting for an individual to arrive, Godot, yet he never does. Now, one can relate this to existential waiting for absolution, religion, or even the thought about life itself. What I see it as is that you can dread the fact that you wasted your time waiting for something that may or may not have happened, or regardless of the end result, enjoy the very process. Then and only then you can start discovering your own meaning through our own personal experiences. So finally, pursue a life full of rich and diverse experiences. Nothing can hold you back because it's not serving any ul ulterior purpose. 
you can see how you are able to utilize an existential crisis and turn it something that is giving you yourself meaning. Your biggest challenge in life itself has become your greatness. And the catalyst for that is no one else but yourself. Thank you.